Welcome back to the Working Class Musician YouTube channel. I'm Jimmy Franklin and uh, let's compare two guitars that really maybe shouldn't be compared. My God, there's so many things right off the bat looking at these two. You guys might be familiar with these two guitars from my YouTube channel. And this one was one of the most popular ones because I got this right as they were coming out with them and it is awesome. I can't stop looking at it in the camera. However, this is brand new. This is only a couple months with me right now. I got this in roughly 2018 and I think it's a 2017. Yeah, this is a 2017 and I think I got it around 18, maybe 19. And this is a 2020 model. We have the Ibanez AZ2202, I think, or 2402. Maybe, whatever, I'll, it'll be in the description. And we have a Strandberg Bowden Standard. Before you guys jump down my throat about this, yes, I am aware that the pickups are slightly different. Yes, I'm also aware that these may not be on the same level price-wise, but I think they are comparable amounts of guitar. I think you'll understand why I'm choosing these two to compare in a little bit. I have a, I feel like everyone who is in this super shredder prog-esque realm is looking at these two guitars. I know I was, and now I have both of them. So maybe that says something. Maybe you could turn off the video right now. Just go buy both. Oh, they're so good. I'm just like looking at everything that is like, that I'm about to compare and I can't believe. Should we roll the thumbnail song really quick? Okay. Let's get right into it here, guys. What's going on is this Realm of Prague Super Shredder guitar that has come out in the past couple years, let's just say been super popularized in the past five years or so, since bands like Chan and Polyphia and uh, you know the Guthrie Govins of the world have been out in full force, since guitar players have reclaimed guitar for their own. The first thing, you know, you could argue that Strandberg was the first one to do it, and then Ibanez followed suit, but you could also argue that Ibanez was the first one to do it and then Strandberg followed suit. I don't think either one followed one another. I think they both understood the trend as it was coming along. I'm gonna start with saying that both these companies are insanely innovative and really maybe there's it's unfair to compare the two. Let's talk about some of the similarities. Let's talk about some of the differences. Let's talk about everything. <laughs> Let's start in the headstock. This one doesn't have one. <laughs> Done. I think it's very important to note that the Ibanez does have locking tuners with adjustable height posts for better intonation and better uh, tuning stability. There's one string tree on there, which some people would say is a little bit sacrilegious, um, especially if you went through so much to keep such a nice break angle and a beautiful headstock. They went to so much of an extent to make sure that you had a really great system up here. Why the string tree maybe? You know, Sir doesn't have them, I don't think, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Locking tuners that really are incredible. They're, they're super solid. I've been using them now forever and I, and I love them. I love this guitar, so I'm not gonna complain about it. Over a bone nut, the oil impregnated bone nut. Bone nut, now obviously, the Strandberg, I think it's either a graphite or a plastic nut, I'm not really sure. So the Strandberg doesn't need to have that great of a nut because it locks at the top. And then it goes over, over the nut, then it goes over the, this zero fret right here. You see that? So there's a whole system down here that is very proprietary to Strandberg that that works nicely. It's a very modern kind of method and I think it works great. But if you want something a little more old school and you can't get past the fact of not having a headstock, this might be the way to go. Oh, I need my 
a whammy bar. He's forgetting the freaking whammy bar. Both these guitars have roasted maple necks. What do we know about roasted maple necks, guys? We know that roasted maple is harder, better, faster. It is wonderful. It's smooth as all hell. It's super clean. Uh, it's, it's super durable in the elements. If you're gonna be playing inside and outside, whenever shows are happening again and people are touring. Ibanez and Stramberg kind of at the same time started doing roasted, roasted maple necks and fretboards. Obviously it's a big trend right now. However, I gotta tell you, <sighs> Stramberg's looks incredible and it's dark and it's beautiful, but no smell. Yeah, no smell. It smells like my pants. And the Ibanez, oh, it smells roasted. I don't know if that's the, the, like the oil finish that they rub on it or what, but it smells wonderful. I don't think that really matters, but I really felt the need to talk about it. <laughs> topic of the neck, this guitar in the first year that I had it, I played it every single day. I taught with it, I played every single gig with it. I was abusing this guitar. There is, there is light rust on parts of it from being out in salt air and tarnishing and everything. So what ended up happening was I kind of have over time uh, worn off some of the finish on the back of the neck here. And you can feel some of the grain, which is very interesting to me. I didn't expect that to happen. And that, it's not really concerning because it still feels great, but I definitely destroyed this neck a little bit. It still feels great, despite the fact, it just feels a little bit more broken in. I, I still love the neck, but it definitely, you could definitely feel a little bit of the wood grain. I'm not sure if that was, uh, a defect or what, but there's like one spot on here, where, like right down the center of the neck here where I just wore it completely away. I've been equally abusing this guitar and playing it every day, and there has been zero wear on the neck. It's stayed completely smooth and exactly how it is the day I bought it. I don't think that this is a super serious issue, but like for the price point, you have to weigh it out. You know, I'm pretty sure this is just like, this would typically be just as durable. And I think I was just being a jackass. But, you know, something to think about. <laughs> the necks aren't even worth comparing, the back of the necks, because this is the this is the Strandberg Ender Neck, which has this squared off flat piece. But if you look at it, it's actually a squared off flat neck. And it's very weird to get used to. And this is your standard kind of like compound radius C-shaped neck, which is very, very awesome. Oh, it's so hard to say because I've really been into the Strandberg Ender. I like the Ender more on a seven string than I do on a six, because it makes the neck actually feel a lot smaller, but it still feels why, I don't know, it's really hard to explain. However, I said from the day I got this guitar that this guitar is the perfect hand shape for me. And I still completely agree with that, that I think that this is a perfect neck.
So both these guitars are equipped with lumen lays on the side of the fretboard. So if, you know, if it lights out, you can still see the fretboard and you can still see what fret you're on. Strandberg has them on the front as well. I don't know why, still have zero clue, but they're there. So to me, that's double the amount of lumen lays on this guitar than you're getting on this guitar. <laughs> Both of them have stainless steel frets because it's the future and if a guitar doesn't have stainless steel frets, they're wrong. If you are playing a guitar in this day and age without stainless steel frets, I don't know why, uh, you must, you, I don't know what you're doing. To me, it's just, it's, it's so much more practical. People talk about sustain and feel, I think these have more sustain and I think uh, as far as tone goes, I'm not convinced by any means that older frets have better tone to them. As a teacher, I will say, the lumen lays on the front are not always big enough for my students to see, which does sometimes bug me. And I really love teaching on this guitar because people look at this and it's almost like they're distracted when I'm teaching them by the guitar because there's so many things that they're not used to. This being so much more standard and having the big dots on the, on the face of the fretboard as well is a little bit more calming to a student. I've noticed that. I'm doing my best to work with it. I do love teaching on both of these very, very much. when you're sitting in a, in a chair with a guitar for a long period of time. This guitar is just under five pounds, and this guitar is roughly eight pounds. That's a huge difference. This guitar is also equipped with the, with the cutaways that you could play in different positions with. Oh, wrong way. You could play in all these different positions, and it actually is extremely comfortable after you've been playing it for a little while. You know, you could switch it whenever you feel like it. This one you can't really entirely do that with. You can, but it's not, uh, it's not ideal, all because of the cutaways and where the input jacks are placed. Input jack on this one is on the back slightly. This one's right on the bottom, if you can see that. So what happens is you can play it here, and the input jack's here. If you put it on this leg, you have to kind of have a little wider stance with your right leg out so it doesn't get in the way of the input jack. Live, both of them are completely equal. If you're standing up, the both input jacks are completely equal to me. Stupid little things, both of them have jumbo strap locks on them that they come with out of the gate so that if you are opening this up out of the box, putting a strap on it and going to play in a gig, you could do that. It's not a scary idea because these companies care about us. Seymour Duncan Hyperion pickups with the Dynamix 10 switch as opposed to Stramberg branded pickups with only a five way, no sort of real dedicated split. One volume, one tone, one volume, one tone. When it comes to the more options on this, I've used maybe six of the settings. Honestly, I've probably used less. I'll be real with you, I've probably only used like three of my favorite settings on this guitar, and I don't really use the entire 10 options. Is it nice to have them? Hell yeah. However, I don't think it's always very necessary. 
It's weird. As you can tell, I bought this after this one. If I really needed the Dyna, you know, the Dynamix 10, then I would have gotten something else that had some sort of split option. I knew going in that this only had a five way. Both of these pickups are very, very comparable, very close. When it comes to getting, uh, whether you should have, you know, an SSH or an HH, you know, two humbuckers or two singles and a humbucker, um, that's, I think, kind of unimportant to this conversation right now because we know Strandberg offers guitars of close price to this with two humbuckers. So we kind of understand that. However, you cannot get an AZ with 24 frets and two single coils and a humbucker. So that's where this comparison gets really interesting and juicy to me because there is no AZ that comes with this pickup configuration with 24 frets. That was why I got rid of the Scott LePage. I really wanted to have 24 frets and this pickup configuration. have trem systems on them. Typical of Ibanez, they join up with all these other companies to make things proprietary to them. And I think it's brilliant. I love that. I think that's been part of the reason Ibanez has grown to where they are because of the way they delegate to other companies and use all these different well-known companies for their best designs and put them on their guitars in, like, in their own way. So this Goto trem on here, even though it is your kind of standard Goto, is still made specifically for this series. Strandberg, however, is best at doing all their own stuff. This is a Strandberg branded, you know, locking trim system that to me is one of the best systems I've used. Let's compare these in depth a little bit. Very important to point out that you have to feed the strings on the Ibanez through the back, through a block, you know, through a big, meaty, uh, big sustain block. It's so good. Then you screw, you click the arm into place, click, then you screw the collar down. Perfect. Best design of its time. Now, it's virtually noiseless. On occasion, I get some clicking. There it was. It was the closest thing at the time I could find to something that was super noiseless and and just super fluent and transparent and just, ah, oh, it's so good. It's still a wonderful trim system. talk about you ha <laughs> oh, I love this thing so much let's talk about this not as big of a block also Strandberg does not care at all about the inner workings of the back of their guitar because it comes without a plate on the back and I could see scratches on the block from my belt and I could see scratches around it from my belt so I know I've been destroying that inside with my belt. If anyone has covered the back, let me know. I think that this block in here is the perfect size. It's not huge, but also you don't have to have strings go through it because the strings come out through here. They lock into place, you do all your tuning down here. Each one of these individual pieces on a Strandberg bridge is its own individual bridge in a way. 
You know, they're very, very isolated saddles with the tuning system, your intonation, your string height, everything is all in one cylinder. And I think they did a great job at isolating each piece. It, it looks way less intimidating to someone who may need to work on their own guitars by themselves. And I think that's important because to me, I look at it and I'm like, okay, yeah, I know I can handle everything that this thing does uh, with a few Allen keys that they provide for you. No springs and no screws, just all Allen keys. And like, you could use your thumbnail to even twist a couple of the things. I think that's really good. This arm is interesting because there's, you would think that there was a, like a locking collar, but there's not. It's actually an invert of what you're used to. There's a hole in here that has threads in it and you put this in and there must be a screw inside that you land on and then you turn and it tightens up. Both of these bridges are floating. This one, however, is pretty much the most noiseless I've ever heard. And not only that, but this, the, the arm for the whammy locks, like is just so perfectly in there. There's no clicking or clanging, but there is no play in that bar. It's great. I love it. Little less of an option of adjusting it since it like you eventually, it'll screw down all the way and it just stops here. There's no option for you to have like it tight up here if you want it, but that's, you know, that's what you trade. I think it's worth mentioning that the pickup selectors, oddly satisfying on the Stramberg, very, very, very solid, more solid than any Strat you're gonna find but it doesn't have the same clunk as the Stramberg does. With a Stramberg, you're getting Stramberg everything, and that's part of the really cool aspect about a Stramberg. With an Ibanez, you're getting a whole community of guitar companies around them. <laughs> The Stramberg sound is more intense and more full. The Ibanez can be way more expressive. Let's turn these things around. Turn around, around then I get a little... The heel of the Ibanez, and look at the back of the Ibanez. I mean, it's gorgeous. They did so many amazing cutaways here. This heel is completely transparent. The Stramberg heel is not as transparent. Both of them, if I'm gonna nitpick, I would say the Ibanez takes the cake on the heel. Honestly, they're both so close. This one I just really like playing with. I think it's just, it's perfect. I mean, they're so ridiculously close, but I still find that this is perfect. This is like a perfect scenario for me. You get up here and you don't even realize you're there. This one, sometimes I'll think about it. They both look so good. Look at those, look at those woods. Oh. They're so close. They just made this one look and feel a little bit better. They're gorgeous all the way around. Oh. So price point, let's talk price point a little bit. I think I got, I think I got this with a coupon and I ended up paying like 1700 bucks for it but I think at the time it was 2000 flat. It was 1999, maybe 21. This, however, I also got with a coupon and I got for 14 as opposed to 17. So they're really not that far out. If you were looking at them side by side, price wise, this is obviously cheaper and may even, it may even make you say that this would be something more equivalent of the premium series, because this is a prestige, not the premium. You would think that this was a high priced premium, which maybe that's the case, but these two guitars to me are way more comparable. This would just blow uh, an AZ premium out of the water. This would completely blow the premium out of the water. This would not touch the highest price Strandberg. So I think these two are pretty close. 
And for what you get with the Dynamix, this is a really, really great option. And if you want something, if you're not used to the idea of playing headless yet or the multi-scale, I found out recently that the multi-scale really helps in your drop tuning. And I would never even, I, I would never even try and drop tune this in general. But this, I know, I've played Strandbergs and I've drop tuned Strandbergs and you can do it. And it's really, really fun and it's very comfortable. And the tension stays great, you know, for like some temporary drop tuning. Did I just cover everything? Huh, how long have we been doing this? Cut some things out, this would be a nice video. I don't even know, if I had to choose one, I don't even know which one I'd choose. I haven't played this one in a little while, and I picked it up today, and I fell in love with it all over again. <laughs> forgot about that. Stramberg soft case. Really well padded soft case that it comes with. And I think all of them might come with that same soft case meant for meant for gigging. It's meant for moving around. This thing comes with a hard case. It's beautiful. The hard case is perfect. However, it's big. This you can throw on your back and take anywhere. This you have to make room for. Something to think about. I don't even think I can make a choice on which one is better. I can't stress enough though, there is no single coil humbucker option with 24 frets from the Ibanez AZ line, which I think is kind of ridiculous. I think Ibanez, if anyone could slay this market, they only have 22 frets with single coils, unless like one of the signature models has it or something like that, I'm not sure. I miss having a humbucker in the neck, but that's just preference and I only got this guitar as like, you know, a teaching tool and something that I can bring with me on the fly and know that I basically have everything I need. Oh, I love both of you so much. You're, you're both the best. I immediately put nine gauge strings on this one when I got it. I left the 10 gauges on on this one. I'm probably gonna switch back to 10s now because I think that how solid this guitar feels has partially to do with the fact that there's tens on it. And I think tens on this would just make it sound massive. Guys, that's all I have to say about these two. I'm in love with both of these guitars and I really wanna hear what you have to say in the comments below about which one of these you would prefer and which one you're thinking about buying. Let me know, I can't wait to talk to you. I try and talk to everyone in the comments. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe to increase your chances of winning my Orange Terror stamp that we're giving away at 3,000 subscribers. Yeah, man. This is, uh, this is the Working Class Musician. I'm Jimmy Franklin, and I'm gonna go play with these two more and try and make a decision on which one I like better. I'll catch you guys next time.